I am Dr. Jayanta Veerman, Consultant Pediatrician attached to Epidemiology Unit, Ministry of Health. First of all, let me thank the SLMA and the uh, Epidemiology Unit for giving us this opportunity to make this short presentation. As you know, in dengue, uh, one should make an early diagnosis and try to make try to give early treatment so that we can prevent complications and deaths. In a, in a primary care setting, uh, dengue will present as basic non-specific symptoms like fever, myalgia, arthralgia, which all of you know. But it is important for us to make an early diagnosis, but the, using this criteria it is very difficult to make early diagnosis uh, be, because all these features are non-specific. The symptoms and signs will help you to make an early diagnosis, but if you have a lot of patients, two or three patients in, the, in your area, in a, in a given street or given household, uh, that, that's called epi epidemiological clustering. It has to be within two weeks to more than two or three patients. Uh, that, that's, that will be helpful for you to make an early diagnosis. Because we have a mnemonic call fever plus two plus two. Fever means with fever you, have, you should have at least two symptoms and epidemiological clustering is as good as uh, NS1 antigen. Uh, NS1 antigen is a useful tool for you to make a diagnosis, but as a doctor treating dengue, uh, it, is, it is more important to make a, rather than making a diagnosis, it is important to differentiate dengue fever from dengue hemorrhagic fever, because dengue fever usually carries a good prognosis. Dengue hemorrhagic fever, if you miss the diagnosis, may have consequence, a lot, uh, bad consequences later on. So. Uh, all practitioner doctors should know how to differentiate DF from DHF. DHF, the difference between the two is actually in DF there is no plasma leak, but in DHF there is a plasma leak. For you to identify the plasma leak, it is very important to do a full blood count. Usually we recommend at the present uh, setting, we have what you call uh, type 2, it is co-circulating in our society, which will uh, at the moment uh, have a, uh, as a result, the dengue patient will present in a very bizarre manner. So they usually dengue patient will leak on the day three, but with uh, type two circulating in your society, uh, we may have leakers as early as day two. So it is important to do a full blood count, preferably day two, definitely on the day three. With that, we can find out uh, the uh, uh, the. Uh, uh, usually when the plasma leaks, the white cell count goes up, the platelet count drops and there will be a rise in hematocrit. With this we can identify uh, leaking very early. Leaking means that your patient is having DHF. And uh, you, one should refer these patients in a, private, uh, in a GP setting, uh, when they start leaking plasma, they have a, usually they have a tachycardia with or without fever and a narrow pulse pressure. With these findings and a hematocrit rise, you may be able to refer the patient to the hospital as early as possible. And uh, of course you have to warn the patient that when you, when you admit the patient to the hospital, uh, the patients may, they may monitor the patient very closely and give uh, uh, maybe hourly monitoring and give free therapy accordingly. And when they recover, from dengue, uh, they usually they have uh, increased appetite with uh, with a sp specific rash and uh, a good urine output, and a patient will be hemodynamically normal.